Hey, I'm Neil. I work as a non-exec founder alongside some great startups, and over the past 30 years, I've built multi-million pound businesses alongside my fellow founders. And today, I'm sharing my nine insights into seed fundraising in Europe. I've been building a landscape for seed capital investment for the European founders that I work with, and these insights are based on that work. I'm focused on seed investment for two reasons. Firstly, I work with experienced founders or contractors who can't build a business on pre-seed investment size. And secondly, the founders I work alongside don't have the time or inclination to join an accelerator or venture studio. So let's start with some definitions. Seed funding raises typically between 1 million and 3 million euros. Seed funding follows pre-seed or angel investing, which raises between 100,000 and 500,000 euros, but comes before Series A investment, which typically raises 6 to 12 million. So let's get started. Insight number one, European seed investment is hot. The number of VCs openly raising European-focused seed funds has grown 479% according to our research. The number of funds that raise new investment money each year has grown from an average of two per year to an average of 14 per year over the past three years. This figure obviously doesn't include US or Asian funds that now include Europe in their focus, nor does it include funds that don't declare their fundraisers, such as corporate VCs. So focus on the growth, the size of the growth, not the absolute number. In comparison with seed, the increase in European pre-seed venture capital fundraisers has only increased by 100% from a measly average of one fund per year to an average of two funds per year during the last three years. Note also I pro-rated 2021 to build these figures. Hence, it's in the European seed investment space that funds are available and venture capitalists are active. Of course, much of the pre-seed investment space is dominated by business angels and accelerators, and they often don't publicize their funds or capacity to invest. So it's a much murkier sector. Hence, don't discount your opportunity to raise pre-seed, but understand that you'll be working with business angels primarily, whereas European seed investment is now venture capital firm dominated. In fact, from my research, it's clear to see that some of the larger business angels or those that have been traditionally active as at the seed stage as individuals have now formed or joined venture capital firms, which leads us to insight number two. It's not who you know. Seed investment is not driven by secret deal flow, nor is it based on who you know. Instead, seed VCs are often collaborative and share investment with other VCs. This of course helps share risk and give VCs exposure to a wider spread of deals but equally, it results in a kind of group think mentality. If I had to categorize this approach, I would call it a momentum investment strategy. However, this strategy only applies at the seed stage. Different strategies apply at earlier or later investment stages. So for instance, at pre-seed, there's no momentum because you can only join one accelerator. At series A to C, there's much less momentum because it's driven largely by spreadsheets. From the founder's point of view, this means that if you can get one seed venture capitalist on board, then the others will follow. It also means that many seed VCs are using standardized type form style applications, so no secret introductions required. Nor do you need to find them on LinkedIn. Insight number three, understanding momentum investing. Earlier I mentioned that European seed investment largely follows a momentum strategy. So what is momentum investing and how do founders prepare their startups to appeal to this VC strategy? Essentially, momentum investors want to see rapidly growing traction, users and or customers and some customer proof, promises to buy or actual first transactions before they invest. However, because many seed investors are using the same investment strategy, once one VC is interested, then they're all interested. You may have seen pictures of car pileups. Yeah, that's kind of how it works. However, there are exceptions. A few VCs are entirely relationship-based. They take their time, they often pass in the first round and aren't afraid to join later. And finally, mainly in niche sectors or specialist sectors, pharma, deep tech, impact, sustainability, etc., there are some VCs who invest because they believe in the project. 
and some specialist investors will invest without pitch decks. But nevertheless, they will almost certainly require some kind of intellectual property or patent. Hence, for the vast majority of startup founders, your best bet is to demonstrate momentum through traction. Yes, theory is good, clever tech is good, but only user or customer traction or momentum will generate term sheets. I have built a slide that I now advise my fellow founders to use at the front of their investment decks. What did this slide tell us? One, it's about setting out what you have achieved in terms of traction. And two, about how you see that traction accelerating in the months ahead. Three, traction is measured as both quantity and value, so a marketplace might speak about inventory loaded onto its website and the value of that inventory if it all sold. Four, client proof. Note, this might be early revenue, but equally it might be offers to buy in the future or other statements of buying intent. Five, again, you need to forecast how the revenue will grow in the months ahead. And six, list your key technical achievement and your future planned product development. Once you can complete this slide, you're ready to raise. Hence, everything should be focused on getting to the point that this slide contains compelling evidence. Once you have your slide ready, we can move on to insight number four, which is you set to focus to target the right venture capitalists. VCs use three main criteria to determine their focus, geography, sector, and or business model stage. Note, other criteria can include the particular interest of partners, for instance, impact investing, or a focus on underinvested founders. However, the majority of seed VCs split along the lines of geography, sector, and stage. One, geography. Seed geography falls mainly into all of Europe, including the UK. UK only, Nordics and Baltics and some subsets, Iberian Peninsula, Central Eastern Europe or Southeastern Europe. There are a couple of France only or Italy only funds too. Seed sectors. Seed sectors vary from verticals such as gaming to deep tech, science, AI, data, health, brands, e-commerce, media, edtech, etc. to business models, services or software, platforms, B2B, enterprise, consumer and so on. Three, stage. And lastly, you need to be at the seed stage, that is showing strong traction in a big potential market with early customer proof and raising a sum of money that fits the seed VC's budget. To attract seed VC, you have to meet their investment criteria and typically the type form application will automatically sort out whether you are in the right space for this investor or not. In truth, VCs blow hot and cold on some sectors, geography is often flexible as are verticals and you never know until you ask, so you might as well send your deck anyway. Nevertheless, you can use sector or geography focus as a way to create a short list of close matches. It is likely that among this group that you will want to find your lead seed investor who will then bring the other VCs and investors with them. Insight number five, don't believe the hype. It's nearly all about traction. Lots, but not all, of seed venture capitalists claim they invest in team. But how do you demonstrate team? Answer, demonstrate. One, great product or MVP. Two, focus on a large disruptive market, which three, is gaining traction, user or customer traction. In fact, for momentum investors, see earlier, if you have rapid traction, that is proof that you have a great product and a great team. That's why the slide I shared earlier works. It really is about putting your traction proof up front and then connecting your user traction with paying customer proof. Some venture capitalists are looking for you to demonstrate a unique insight, which again, converts into evidence of traction, ideally a strong indication of long-term potential growth too. You may also see VCs talk about unique insight, for which they often mean network effect, driver, or multipliers. I've recorded another video on how this element is largely the same as your North Star or Magic Moment. Do check it out either on my YouTube channel or via my Media Modo website. This magic moment insight will be critical to your long-term success on whether you raise funds or not. Insight number six, VCs see seed as a check size. When venture capitalists talk about seed, they're thinking about investment check size. So if you look at the checks they write, you can tell if they're active in seed. Remember, seed raises between 1 million and 3 million euros convert to pounds if you're raising in the UK or Swedish kroner, etc. From the investor's perspective, seed is a plus or minus one to three million euro investment for a 15 to 25% equity stake. 
It's worth noting that VCs in Spain and Portugal or Central or Southeastern Europe tend to have smaller funds and invest lower amounts. However, this is changing quite rapidly in Spain and Portugal as Nordic and German, French and UK space funds focus on Iberian startups. However, I haven't seen similar movements in the investment size in CEE or SEE funds yet. Of course, as mentioned above, from the founder's perspective, seed is the stage where you have a viable product. You have user growth and you're seeing your first paying customers. The secret here is to make sure your startup is focused on getting to the point of landing your first customer with your initial resources. Otherwise, you may struggle to develop your business sufficiently to persuade seed investors. Insight number seven, plan for series A, the next step. The goal of seed investment from the investor's point of view is to develop the startup and grow revenue to 1 million euros plus of annual recurring revenue, which then opens the door to series A investors who pay about six times more money for the same size of equity stake. It's important to recognize this as your startup's next step and to ensure that you ask for enough money to achieve that goal with a bit to spare. Note, in many cases, the investment money will be spent on staff. So typically a team of between 30 to 50 people built over six months on board for a further 12 months gives you a quick assessment of how much money you'll need. It's in the region of about 2 million euros. One of the risks then in taking on seed investment is that if you accept money too early, you may not be ready to build team to this size in this time frame. And or if your business has uncertain foundations, then the whole edifice could come toppling down. Hence, don't accept seed funding too early. Insight number eight, understand the VC cycle to know who to approach. Venture capitalists are active differently during their own fund cycle. Here's how it typically works. VC raises a fund, let's say 60 million euros for a 10 year period. Years one to three, they invest in lots of seed opportunities. Years four to six, they invest in follow-on series A, series B opportunities. Years seven to 10, the final years, they are exiting to return the money to investors with profits, which then enable them to raise more money for the next round and the next fund. So focus on seed investors who have raised funds in the last two to three years, not those that once were active. This is why it is good to know that 13 new funds and 20 on a pro rata basis will have raised seed investment by the end of the year. And then another 40 to 90 European seed funds are still within their first three years of active investment phase or have active investment strategies. Again, some funds don't share fundraising activities such as corporate funds, but they are still active. Note, if you see that an investor is active in seed but hasn't raised a fund for two to three years, it may be a sign that they're about to launch a new fund, in which case it would be a great idea to pitch them, even though their old fund is aging. However, VCs with funds older than five years are probably closed for new investment. Insight number nine, how to negotiate with seed investors. Now you understand the different stages and what VCs expect of a seed investment, you can begin to figure out how to negotiate. Essentially, a typical seed investment discussion follows this path. VC, nice to meet you. Let's take our time and get to know each other. Founder, the train or the investment opportunity is leaving the platform. If, are you getting on or not? Actually, the founder is often screaming, I'm out of money, I'm out of resource, I need funding now. But don't let that get in the way of the negotiation. So what's happening here? Essentially, if your startup has strong traction, and is beginning to land your first customers and you can start to see a path to more revenue, then perhaps you can also see a path to 50,000 euros of per month revenue. If so, this is post seed, a halfway stage between seed and series A. If an investor waits to invest at the post seed stage, they will pay twice as much for the same stake. Equally, if they delay until the series A stage, they will, instead of seed, they will pay six times more money. That's a huge difference. Hence, it's in the VC's interest to delay investing until your startup has more evidence and grown further and is seeing more revenue. Effectively, if a venture capitalist can pay seed price for a post-seed startup, then they have doubled their money, on paper at least, right away. And that's a smart move. So how do you, the founder, push back? Answer, say this, the train is leaving the station. If you, the investor, want to get on at seed, you need to do so now. 
If not, the next stop is post-seed, when you'll pay double for the same stake. The curious thing here is that the founder has to take the opportunity off the table as quickly as possible, and the VC wants to keep it on the table for as long as possible. Okay, I'm characterizing here to make a point, and each VC is different, and you can build great relationships with your VCs, etc. But it's critical to know that this dynamic is playing in the background of every negotiation, even if no one says so explicitly. Just never forget that your job, having offered the initial seed investment opportunity, is to build your startup to post seed as soon as possible. The faster you do this, the more VCs will knock on your door. So what's the coaching question from all of this? It really has to be this. Is the train ready to leave the station? In other words, have you built or are you building your startup such that seed is only a temporary stop and that you are preparing to move to post-seed funding very soon? I'm Neil Lewis and I partner alongside founders. If you like this, you can check out more of my stuff at mediamodo.co.uk, like the video or subscribe to my channel below for more startup insights.